Tonight on 16 by 9, the high price tag on cheap fakes. It's organized crime and serious criminals who are involved in the counterfeiting operation. Here's Carolyn Jarvis. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9. Take a walk through any Canadian shopping mall, Main Street or flea market, and it's likely you'll come across a piece of counterfeit. And while to many buying a knockoff is nothing more than a good deal, ask those trying to fight the counterfeit trade and they'll tell you that bargain is fueling a lucrative web of organized crime. The counterfeiting industry is now so pervasive, it's estimated to be worth billions globally. And as we found out in this 16 by 9 investigation, Canada is a hotspot. This is where it all starts. The big seduction. Driven by extravagance and excess, the multi-billion dollar fashion industry knows how to fuel demand for brand names. Supermodels wear it and shoppers want it, but some brands could cost a paycheck or two. Unless you look elsewhere. The urban back alley, where another multi-billion dollar industry is flourishing in Canada. The front of the store sells jewelry, though there's a back room that is utilized for the sale of counterfeit products. Nobody has been able to quantify the problem. People have said five to seven percent of the global economy. I can only tell you, counterfeit is everywhere in Canada. Small towns, cities, it's there. And, and there's more of it today than there was last year than there was the year before. The US 301 watch list it identifies countries that haven't met their obligations in relation to any counterfeiting measures. And Canada is on that watch list. In Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver, the back streets of commerce are paved in gold. Fool's gold, that is, because this is the world of the $3 bill. The fake, the phony. Billions of dollars bleeding from brand name companies directly into the pockets of the counterfeiters. Canon, Nike, Molson, Calvin Klein, Gucci, Prada. Why should people care when Prada or Louis Vuitton isn't making money off a knockoff purse when they're making $2,000 off every other purse they sell? It's organized crime and serious criminals who are involved in the counterfeiting operation. This isn't a mom and pop industry. Lawyer Michael Manson deals with the fallout of a leaky border in court, fighting intellectual property cases. This is organized back to major factories throughout China, which is the biggest exporter of counterfeit goods in the world. Direct from China, this is the first port of call for the merchants of fakery. Vancouver, where two million containers come and go every year. Roll out the welcome mat for counterfeit goods because almost none of these containers are ever inspected to see what's inside. Nine times out of ten we'll do nothing because we're not really looking. We only scan about one percent of all containers coming into the country. Then there's a second big hole in the net. Even if the border service agents do find fake goods, Canadian laws don't give them authority to seize the shipment. The best they can do is call police to let them know a container of counterfeits is in town. So in these crates, there really could be anything. Anything at all, from baby food, electrical goods, to DVDs, you name it. Anything that fits in a crate and anything they make a dollar on, they'll do. The biggest problem is border control in Canada. We fall far short of what other countries are doing in terms of preventing the importation and distribution at the borders. What's the big deal about getting a Disney toy that would sell for $35 if I can get it for five? Inside that plush toy, you'll find rat feces, all sorts of health and safety issues. Come on, issues. rat feces? Honest to goodness. You've seen this? I've seen it. They found shampoos that came over from China full of feces. Next stop for all those fake goods, just down the street, where bargain hunters line up at the Richmond Night Market. 
Meet the real Dick Tracy. We'll call him George. He works alone, anonymous. How much for the sunglasses? I, only five dollars. Only five dollars? Yeah. Are they good ones? Uh, yeah. He's a private eye, a retired police officer hired by any one of dozens of brand name companies that have taken matters into their own hands. How much are these? Okay, Carolyn, what did you get? I bought for $7 Chanel earrings. And it's got the word Chanel on it? This one actually says Shane. Shane, okay. But only a fraction of the fake Chanel earrings and other counterfeit products from China stay in the Vancouver area. Loaded onto flatbed trucks, they start their journey down the Trans-Canada Highway coming to a strip mall or shopping complex near you. The mother load of counterfeit goods lands up in the largest consumer market in Canada. Toronto. A five minute walk from the real McCoy, the brand name shops, this is ground zero for knockoffs. The city within a city, Chinatown. A place packed with counterfeit according to RCMP inspector Todd Gilmore. They have it in the basement, they have it in their stores. Uh, there's no place uh, we couldn't find counterfeit goods. In the jargon of the street, this is a hot spot, a strip mall or shopping complex that's really a bazaar of bogus products. That's where we caught up with a second private eye on the search for counterfeit goods, who we'll call John. What you're watching is John making his third undercover visit to gather evidence on someone he's had under surveillance for 10 months. This individual has been selling counterfeit for quite some time by his own admissions and our investigation. Hey, how are you, man? Good, here. Yeah? <laughs> good, good. Do you have a Gucci one? Yeah, I'll take a Gucci. This one started from another counterfeiter that was served cease and desist documents. Thank you. This one is a $30. This is a $30. John says this backroom operation got a break a year ago when police stamped out its competition. It was fall 2011, and unsuspecting retailers were waiting for a shipment of counterfeit goods from China that never came. Half a dozen cops moved in on the targets they had been watching for six months. The one-time operation saw the RCMP and the Canada Border Services Agency partner up and intercept millions of dollars of fake goods before they hit store shelves. It took two transport trucks to empty the amount of counterfeit goods that we found in that specific location. This is another, oh, it's a Prada handbag. Coach. This is part of $78.5 million worth of counterfeit goods, and it's just one of uh, 20 trailers. So this represents a victory? Of course it does. It's $78.5 million that isn't generating uh, illicit profits for criminal organizations. Here you got some Dolce and Gabbana jeans. It was a national media hit. I can rip this right off. Oh, there we go. The perfect money shot for the TV cameras. The perfect sound bite. They're all the way from China, right to a good old Canadian dump site. But even the man in charge had to admit it was only a drop in the bucket. In the grand scheme of things, in, in, in the counterfeit world, it's not that uh, significant. A year after the high profile bust, counterfeit goods are still for sale. But the counterfeit story has faded from the headlines. Is your file not sexy enough? It's not meth trafficking. It's not human trafficking. Uh, there's a lot of serious things out there. But this is our mandate, and we take it seriously. A serious issue that Gilmore says border agents need more serious powers to fight. Yeah, they don't have the powers to look for counterfeit goods, and, uh, you know, that, that is a problem. We asked the Canada Border Services Agency to explain on camera why they don't have the power to choke the flow of fake goods right at the port of entry into the country. But they declined our request for an interview. This is the higher quality, right? Back at the strip mall, 
This suspected counterfeit dealer is happy the police wiped out the competition. At least for now. You had any more issues with the police or anything? Like any problems? So business is better than that. <laughs> As for those millions of dollars of counterfeit goods police did seize, they brought them here to be destroyed. Nice Gucci purse. Louis Vuitton, garbage. And the final coup de grace? The bill for that goes to you, the taxpayer. <laughs>